So I was asked the other day whether I would create a video on plantar fasciitis. Oh, feet are my thing. I love talking about feet because I had a problem with my own feet. And I was told that I had flat feet, that I would need orthotics. And in my fitness days, I would obsess with buying the right trainers. I was, I have these, had these corns on my toes. Oh gosh, I had feet that really needed a lot of love. And what I could share with you today is that everything that I was told was not true because we were basing our paradigm of the way feet are formed on the old paradigm of anatomy. So I began to work my foot first through the Eric Franklin method with the little ball. Today, I am guided by the intuitive movements of my body that helped to keep my feet supple, healthy, and just free. So my first tip today is really look at your footwear. So if you have plantar fasciitis, the first thing to do is to free your feet. Look at the shoes that you're wearing because Plantar fasciitis, anything with an itis at the end of it, I-T-I-S, means that your foot is inflamed, your feet are in inflammation. And if you know thermosensing, sensing, you'll know that I'm all about calming inflammation. And anything can add strain to your body, including your footwear. So that's the number one. There may be stresses in your life that's causing strain in your body. If you want to calm that inflammation, we need to give the body an experience of nurturing, nourishing, as well as bringing the foot back to its natural movement pattern. Okay. So I want to show you a close-up of my feet. So this is where I am today. Oh gosh, I just love the freedom that I have in my feet, I can move them around in different ways, which I was never able to do. I mean, this would feel really painful for me when I had um, stuckness in my ankles and my foot. And in the past, before I started moving and uh, reshaping my feet, they were here. So my ankles were collapsed inwards. It was called collapse, but there was actually strain elsewhere in the body. And when you shape change and adjust those areas of strain and free up your feet because it, it, it impacts on your whole body, then you can find the integrity. So what we're looking for is the integrity of your whole body, including your feet. So you should be able to lift your toes, and place each toe on the ground individually. So these are some of the movements that you could explore to, for fit mobility. It might add, you might feel a little bit of strain. So this is all possible, which was never possible for me before. And I still have the remnants of wearing shoes that were over tight for me from a young age. So I still have those remnants. I still have tiny little corns on my toes, especially on this one. But you know, my feet are, are gosh, my feet are so much better. And walking barefoot. I absolutely love walking barefoot everywhere. So back to plantar fasciitis. And remember, anything with an ITIS means inflammation. We want to calm that inflammation, soothe, nourish, and nurture. So any movement practice that I share with you today should feel good. If it doesn't, let go of it. So I'm going to start with the ball. And you want to, ball, this one's a, a bit of a flashy ball because I bought it from a toy shop. But you want one of these spiky, not hard ball, a kind of medium so you can squeeze it like this. 
especially if you have plantar fasciitis, because you don't want it to be too hard. Remember, anything that feels uh, too, um, anything that feels painful, don't use it. You want something that feels like a massage. Okay, so I'm going to just move back here. So you'll just see my foot. Okay, so here's my ball, and I'm going to give my foot a little massage. So just really finding, ooh, he rolled, does that feel good? I might squeeze the ball with my foot. So a lot of the, the time in somatic practice, or in soma sensing in particular, we go with the sensation, body sensation, finding what feels good. I may give you some guidelines like pressing your foot onto the ball, pressing a little gently, and then rolling it from side to side to get to those areas that might be stuck across the fascia of your foot because it can get stiff, stuck, and you want that freedom just moving around. If you place the ball on your heel, you can move your heel. Just really freeing up any stuckness. And I just want to share with you, as well as calming inflammation, if there's any, anything stuck, you want all of these to move freely, your, your foot to move freely like this. Okay? So go back to the other side. Just... Rolling the ball, ooh, finding where it feels good. Ah, to give you a nice nurturing, nourishing sensation. You can roll it from side to side. Just to explore. You can even explore grabbing hold of the ball. You don't have to lift it off. You could just press. Just play with that for a little while. It doesn't take long. Just a few moments. Then the heel. So really, just to recap, if you're using a little ball, rolling it along, outer edge, inner edge, you can pause, rolling it from side to side. Ooh, just get in there on your heel, you can press in, and that's really it, nothing more than that, just some of these movements, and then you can let go of that, okay, so now we're on the floor, now, another area that can get really stuck or stiff is around the ankle, it's, it's as if you have a uh, a band of connective tissue around the ankle and it might get a little stiff. So the best way to ease any strain is to coax, pulse, and find what feels good. Okay, so let's start. Um, I'm here on my, just sitting back onto my heels. Now notice that I'm rocking back and forth because for many people, this area is really stiff and if you try and sit back onto your heels, ooh, it, it just gives you that ooh, right? Especially if it's in inflammation. So just rock yourself forward and check in with your hands. Make sure that your hands are, your, your fingertips are pointing backwards. And then just rest here and give yourself a little soothing, rocking back motion here. Just nice and gentle, easy, coaxing, mm, finding what feels good. Always good to find what feels good. Just nourishing, nurturing. And if you feel the urge to rock from side to side, you can. So just finding in your body, you can now change the position of your hands, rock back and forth. So I have my toes turned under. And again, this might be um, a little painful for some, some of you if you're trying this. So 
always take the pressure off. You never want to, if you're sitting here, it's going to put a lot of pressure. This is why, remember, coax, pulse, you can turn under whenever you wish. Just to find in your body what feels like it's taking care of you, moving the position of your hands if you wish. A little bit of that. And then in this next practice, you can take your foot behind you. Just let your body rest here and rock from side to side. So you're rocking from side to side. Now, remember what I said to you earlier is that we, we look at the whole body. Your fascia, the, the connective tissue that shapes your body, is one continuous fabric. So when you move, everything moves, right? You might be nourishing your ankle. It's not just your feet, but your whole body, your lower back. You can turn it, but under, you can add a little pulse. This is a really good one for your plantar fasciitis, only if it feels nourishing, right? You can always turn your foot the other way. You can come off and explore like that and just roll off and rest here and then you can bring your hands behind you just let your foot move freely like this you can move your foot back and forth and letting your body just rest so you're hanging out in your seated position, your shoulders are shrugging to your ears. If you just move your whole body back and forth from your foot, everything moves. Okay. And then we can kind of just swap sides and explore this side, just rocking back and forth, moving the whole body. And remember, you're just hanging out sitting here, hanging out. Ah, you can rest at any time. Let your foot free up. Pause at any time. And let's go to the opposite side and rock from side to side. And in this whole body motion, you're not just getting to your foot, remember, you're also getting to other areas, you might feel this in the front of your pelvis. You're going to move all the way to your outer thigh on the opposite side. And just moving to the opposite side, if I'm rolling off, it goes all the way to the foot, right? So you might feel it in your lower back, your outer thigh. Whole body motion is so efficient because this is going to help you not only with your foot, but with calming inflammation in your whole body. You can rock back and forth, find what feels good, what feels nourishing, nurturing. Ah, easeful, like that. So these movements that place your foot in different ways. Because remember, if you're stuck in your shoes all day and you're not moving in this way where you can unwind and let your feet feel free, um, which is the best way, then they will become stuck and inflamed, right? So I just wanted to give you a taster of some of the movements that you can explore. So we've, we've had the one before. Um, so this one, I'm not expecting you to kind of find this movement. My body just goes here, and you can see that I'm, I'm rocking and my ankles getting some relief. Okay, so um, you can come back to where we were before and just rock back and forth. And another one uh, to go this way, the opposite way. Okay. And then you can rock back and forth. Yeah. 
just on your feet like this, rocking back and forth. It's going to get into your lower back. And you'll realize that it's not just your feet that have discomfort. You will find that there are other areas of your body that have this kind of discomfort sensation, right? Oh, oh, and then let go of that. So I just want to recap that. When you have inflammation in your body, you want to calm that inflammation and find what feels good. When it comes to feet and freeing up your feet, you want to bring the natural movement patterns back to your foot. We are meant to move our body in different ways in spiral motion we're meant to sit on the ground in this way and if we're not doing that we won't have the freedom of movement in our feet so um, i would urge you to walk barefoot that's my number one free up your feet walk barefoot number two is your footwear you need to really find shoes that give you a wide toe box you will have heard of zero drop shoes um yeah I'll, I'll i would probably create a separate video just for shoes and i hope that you've taken something away to help you uh, with not just plantar fasciitis but the importance of giving your feet some love some nurturing some care.